most populations evolve, right? Well, right. But it's hard to determine whether or not a population is evolving or not if you're not studying the populations and the frequencies of genes inside of them. So to explain the laws of inheritance of genes in populations, a few gentlemen came along. Their names are Hardy and Weinberg. They are a mathematician and a physician, respectively, and they agreed upon a principle now named the Hardy-Weinberg principle. And this principle had certain, um, certain factors or conditions that must be met in order for um, a population to be in what's called genetic equilibrium, meaning it is not evolving. So let's go through the list of conditions that must be met for populations to be in equilibrium, to, or to not evolve. First, the population would have to be very large. Think of the human population, um, extremely large population, uh, not a lot of change in the frequency of genes in this population just because it is so large. So everything re remains relatively stable. So if, an, if a population was really small, let's say conversely, um, then if there was a major disaster, such as a big volcanic eruption or something, killing off um, a lot of these people in this small population, um, there would be uh, dramatic changes or effects on the, population, uh, on the population's gene frequency. Second, there must be no immigration or emigration outside of the population, um, into or out of the population. So when we talk about immigration and emigration, we're saying organisms must not move in and out. If they do, the population can lose or gain traits, causing evolution to occur over many generations. Third, there must be no mutations. So, um, you know, the UV rays of the sun is a mutagen causing mutations. Um, it can damage DNA um, such that, it, you know, an adenine nucleotide base turns to a thymine, um, and that's genetic mutation. If mutations occur in populations, uh, variations, this leads to variations in populations, and, um, and thus diverse, diversity um, is displayed in following generations, causing their ultimately, ultimately to be uh, selected for or not selected for. And fourth, um, the fourth principle of the Hardy-Weinberg principle the, or the condition states that uh, there, there must be uh, random mating such that many different members of a species will mate, even from very far off distances. So if this person here lived in Africa, and this person lived in New Zealand, um, that, that there would be completely random mating such that even though they were s separated by oceans, uh, they would be able to, to mate. Um, and this isn't very likely. Um, and uh, therefore, in most populations, evolution is occurring. So there is there is not such a lack. Um, so there is is a lack of very random mating. People usually mate with people that are that are very close by, like their neighbors, or at least people within the same city. So fifth, um, there mu and lastly, there must be no natural selection. So um, if natural selection occurs, such as that uh, one individual is more likely to survive and reproduce than the other, then the traits in a population will change um, from one generation to the next. So there must not be uh, natural selection acting upon a population in order for it to remain genetically stable. So ask yourself, perhaps, um, are humans in genetic equilibrium? Why or why not? Remember that if only one or two of these conditions here are violated, then the population can change or evolve. So try putting a, either a plus or a minus to, uh, next to each condition to figure it out.